It's that time of year again, back to school with those smiling student faces. Back to school means back to testing, and the DRA reading test is one of, that we give at the beginning and the end of the school year, and it's one of the most important tests we give to gather student reading data. With giving the DRA comes a lot of time preparation and material gathering as well. First, you have to take the time to go down to the workroom to make lots of copies of the DRA forms, and there are a lot of them to copy. Second, you have to organize your materials and hope that in the midst of testing, you don't run out of the DRA form. Then you have to make preparations again and think about how you're going to get copies before you give that next test to your students. So what is the solution? Let's go on a paperless adventure with the DRA. Last year, second grade teacher Stephanie Williams began her paperless adventure with the DRA. It occurred to her that in that DRA kit in her classroom, there was more than just test forms and teacher guides. Tucked nicely away in the big box is also a CD that contains PDF copies of each DRA level test. What did she do? Well, what any 21st century teacher would do. She found a way to give the DRA test with less prep time and material gathering and more time to test without stress and the ability to share this testing data of her students with other teachers in her building. How can I do this, you say? Let's jump right in, and you'll be amazed how easy it is to go on a paperless adventure with the DRA. So let's get started with the tools you'll need to give a paperless DRA. The first, of course, is going to be a mobile device, something like an iPad or a Windows 8 tablet. And along with that device, you're going to need an annotating app, something that you can load a PDF file into and then make changes to, write on, etc. The app I like to use is called Notability something like $2.99 in the App Store. Sometimes it's, it is on sale. Also along with this app on your mobile device, you're of course going to need the PDF CD of all the DRA test forms. You're going to need your computer to be able to load all of those forms onto and then email them to yourself or put them in a cloud-based storage system like Dropbox or Google Drive. Other than that, you're ready to get started. So I'm ready to give the DRA test to my students. First, I loaded all the DRA PDF testing forms on my computer. You could also upload these to a cloud-based storage system like Google Drive or Dropbox. After I've loaded these forms on the computer, I then email them to myself. That's where your mobile device comes in. So I'm going to check my email on my iPad, and I'm going to find the attached uh, PDF in my email. I'm going to tap and hold that PDF and open it in my annotating app notability. I'm going to create a new note, and there I've got my DRA PDF test form ready for testing. Um, I can also, in this app particularly, take an audio recording as I'm um, jotting down notes and annotating on the form. After I've given the test form, I can um, label it with the student's name and then drop it back into Google Drive, Dropbox, or email it to myself, and then I've got all my student records on my computer. Something else I want to show is that I've got unlimited access to as many copies of this DRA form as I need. Before I give the test, I've got the green Freddy PDF form here. I tap and hold and I get a duplicate button. I can duplicate it as many times as I need to be able to use that form in particular. So this is a great way to save time, save paper, and to be able to communicate uh, even more efficiently test scores and student data to other teachers in my building. Let's take a look at Stephanie Williams in action giving a paperless DRA. Let's just take a look at these books. I'm going to read one today. Which one do you think you will be interested in reading? Let me just check out the covers there and the titles and see what you think. Peanuts to peanut butter. Peanuts to peanut butter? All right, that sounds like a plan. Okay, don't open it up yet for me. So I've got to get my things open. Okay. Last name what kind of level is this? It's an awesome one. All right, Max. We're 
Here we go ahead, we're going to look at this right here. And this says, from peanuts to peanut butter. Okay, that's the name of this book. And it tells how peanuts are grown and then made into peanut butter. So I'm going to have you read out loud to me pages two through six until we see this funny little star symbol. Can I show you that funny little star symbol? We're going to stop that. When you see that little symbol, we're going to stop. Okay? All right. I'll close that for you. When I start my timer, you can go, okay? All right, go. From peanuts to peanut butter. Peanut butter. Can you find a jar of peanut butter? Oh, hang on just a second. Pause for me. All right, keep going. In, the, in most homes, lots of kids like to eat peanut butter. Did you know it, that millions of pounds of peanut butter are eaten in the United States? In Canada each year? That's a lot of peanut butter. Peanuts are planted in April. Hang on just a second. I think it skipped a page on me here. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, why don't we try that right there, please. Thanks. From peanuts. <coughs> peanut butter is made from peanuts. <coughs> peanuts are grown on farms. About half of the peanuts grown <coughs> on farms are used to make peanut butter. <laughs> Most peanuts are grown in the southern part of the United States. There, the weather is warm. The soil is very sandy. Peanuts need rich, sandy soil in warm days at, and nights to grow. Peanuts are planted in April. They are planted in rows of the peanut plant starts to come through the soil after two weeks. It looks like a small bush when the plant is 18 inches tall. Small yellow flowers bloom. First, the flowers fall off, then pegs grow down into the ground. Soon, the peanuts begin to grow on the pegs. All right, nice job, Max. Thank you for reading that with me. I'm going to ask you a few questions here in just a second. Will that be all right? Will you be okay with that? Is that okay? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to open the book up to the table of contents page right here. And I want you to look at this page and tell me what three questions you think might be answered as you read this book. Well, <coughs> peanuts are kind of good for you. Do you think that's a question? Can you give me three questions? Okay. Don't you look, you look at here. Use that to help you. Okay. That's another question. Group. 
Okay, can you think of one more for me? Are they healthy? Okay. Now I'm going to have us open up the book to page four. Can you help me turn to page four? All right, looking here at page four, why do you think the author put a heading right here at the top of this page? Why do you think the author did that? Maybe for the contents. Can you tell me a little more about that? No, well, that's okay. <coughs> okay, now I want you to kind of look at this map they have right here. Check that out, read it, and tell me, what does that map show you? It shows us a lot of places around this side of the world. Anything else that it shows you? No. Nothing else that didn't show you anything else. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and let you take this story back to your seat on your own. I want you to go ahead and read the whole story. When you're all done, will you let me know? I'll ask you just a few more questions. Yeah. Yeah? Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. So, Miss Williams, what yes. do you love about the paperless adventure with the DRA test? First and foremost, the convenience of the whole thing. I don't have to worry about running copies or running out of a certain set of tests whenever all of a sudden I have a kid who needs to test on a book and I don't have copies. I obviously can't go make a copy at that time. So I have an unlimited number of copies on here. Also, I love that while the kid is reading for the running record portion, I'm recording their reading. So later on, I can go back and I can listen to it and I can go through and just, just check different things that maybe I wasn't sure about or verify different things that I had questions about. Um, it's easy to share that with a reading teacher or any other specialist in the school who needs to have that information. And then once I'm done doing the test, um, I'm able to go ahead and put it back in Dropbox and I take my whole class back onto my computer. It goes right into their files. So if anybody for like care team, a SPED referral, anyone like that needs access to that, it's a really quick email and I'm not dealing with trying to find some paper in a binder that is tucked somewhere covered in dust because Honestly, I have packed stacks, stacks of papers, and that's what ends up happening to them. So, if it's electronic, it's easy for me to access, and it's very convenient. So, I know this sounds like a lot of steps just to save a little time and paper, but it is well worth it. Now, my forms are digital. Instead of keeping a mountain-sized folder of these records, like this, or even a notebook, like this, now I have all my forms ready to use on my iPad and I have the ability to save the completed forms to my computer. Uh, I, now I can access the, these test forms throughout the year. I don't have to dig through these files or binders. Uh, just a couple of clicks and I've got a student's test displayed on my computer screen. Even better, if another teacher needs a copy, it's just a couple of clicks and they've got it in their inbox. I don't have to copy my copy. I don't have to make more copies to have ready for other student tests. It's right on my iPad, ready to go. So that concludes the paperless adventure with the DRA. I hope you will join in the adventure and revolutionize the way you collect student DRA data.